What a lovely music. My name is Jason guys. Welcome to the dark side of entrepreneurship where we deep dive into the uncharted waters of business strategy and decision making using your intuition for a change. I'm your host once again Jason and today we are going to be embarking on a journey to uncover the secrets of positioning your business from the gut. Now you might be wondering when we say gut we are not really referring to gut like the actual gut I'm talking about instincts. So imagine this you're standing on a standing at a crossroad in your entrepreneurial journey which most of us who are listening are entrepreneurs so you know unsure where the path what's going to take you the traditional playbook YouTube videos which are out there they all mentors coaches everyone says that rely on market research strategic planning What if if I told you there is another way? What if your intuition holds the key to unlock untapped potential in your business? In this episode, me and Nisa, we are going to be freaking flipping the script to conventional wisdom and exploring the power of gut instincts in shaping the trajectory of your business. But here is a twist. It's not about just blindly following your gut. we will dwell into how successful entrepreneurs like Nisa a soul led brand photographer harnesses her intuition to make strategic decisions that propels businesses forward so i would recommend that if you are not having your headphones grab in your headphones settle in have a favorite cup of coffee beer whatever you like to drink prepare to be inspired as we unravel the mystery of intuition driven entrepreneurship i want to formally welcome nisa nisa thank you so much for joining the conversation uh, let's have some applause people you know let's have some applause <laughs> thank you so much jason It's so lovely to you know have you here. Now guys, you know if you're wondering who Nisa is, although you know I have a bio listed under the show notes, but again, she's a soul-led brand photographer, the founder of Ginger and Carrot Production, who is a you know that's a creative agency that provides photography, videography, and strategy for brand and thought leaders alongside her husband and business partner. Uh you know they help to help leaders rediscover their authentic voice. create content that is aligned with their energetic capacity and overall vision for the businesses. Nisa is also the host uh, for another podcast which is called as Keep It in the Group Chat, a podcast about intersection of entrepreneurship and financial abundance. Uh, this podcast is also available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify and YouTube. Once again, welcome Nisa to the show. and i want to give a shout out to thomas who is listening from australia leslie who is listening to us from pennsylvania sharon and everybody else who is intending on joining this conversation so thank you so much guys for your love and support uh, before we begin uh, by the way i want to make a quick announcement i have been nominated you if you remember guys back in november i had applied for an award uh, for the india audio summit awards So I finally got an email confirmation from them that I have been nominated I am in the shortlisted category. So tomorrow April 4th uh they are going to be releasing uh information as to who would have won that specific award. So I'm going to be there uh at the international airport hotel and uh, hopefully you know wish me luck guys you know if i win it nothing like it. My mom is going to be super proud. I do everything i do for my mom. So So cheers to that. So I just wanted to highlight and share that with you folks. So let's actually begin. You know, Nisa, I don't want to take too much time, people's time. Now, I want to first of all understand why do you call yourself a soul-led band brand photographer? What made you choose this name? Uh, how did you become a photographer? Why do you love cameras and videography and all those fun things? Well, it started in piece by piece. So I picked up the camera over 10 years ago back when I was in college. Um growing up I was a band kid and I played the trombone and I took it really seriously and I played the trombone for like about a decade as well from middle school on and well into college. And like a lot of those recreational activities they're serious until you hit a certain age and there's not really a path for it and sort of got hit with this reality of what am i going to do and in college i need to do something and couldn't do band anymore i was like 
I know I'm not going to try and have a career as like joining a professional orchestra. So I had to figure out what was next. And I picked up a camera just to have that creative outlet. And a few of my friends were hobbyist photographers as well. So that's kind of how I was introduced to it. And my college at the time let us, um, they had like a center that they called the digital library and they let you borrow camera equipment for free as long as you turned it in back in 48 hours. So I would literally rent the camera, return it and rent it again. (laughs) And I did that for like two years Um, and started photography. And I had no idea that it would could be a career that it would take me anywhere. I was just, I just sort of became obsessed with it and it became a part of my identity. And it was always in the back of my head as a creative outlet for me. And fast forward to post having a career in a completely different industry and COVID hitting, I really felt like that ringing in my ear was getting louder and louder of like, I am a creative person and I want to have a creative career. And now I know it's possible. And I also know that exploring, you know, perceived safer routes weren't actually safer. It was just sort of my limiting belief around that. So that's where we started Ginger and Carrot Productions. And the soul piece came in just over time working with clients and realizing that we're not just here to take photos. And that was a lesson that I kept learning over and over again, even back in my hobbying days. But I was like, I'm not just here to do anything for anyone for any reason. I'm here because I care about your story. I create environments that make people feel vulnerable and safe. And I prefer to work with people who have a bigger mission, who are looking for fulfillment. And so it kind of came from value propositioning of like my own personal values of being in your soul and letting that guide your path and also matching myself up with other people who operate that way. So it's a little bit of who I am and making sure that I'm able to leverage that to connect with other people who also resonate with that. (laughs) I appreciate you giving us that backstory. That makes a lot of sense. Your journey from being in a band. Okay, understanding that doesn't have too much future, picking up the camera, renting it out for two years. And finally, finally, uh, having a business called Ginger and Carrot Production. The name is really funny. Okay, Nisa, would you mind sharing with my listeners why do you call it Ginger and Carrot? I know what's uh, the reason behind it, but I would like you to share this with my listeners too. Yeah, it's funny. We get this question so often and it shocks me every time. But so it's a little bit of a pun in the sense that we did start our business with food photography so there is that literal connection there but also our dog's name is ginger and we always said that if we got a second dog we would name it carrot so like as a family be like we have ginger and carrot with us and we literally named the business after our dogs because we just wanted to keep it simple and keep it in the family a lot of photographers name their businesses after themselves and that didn't feel right for us. And so I don't even know how it came up. Like we were just like trying on different names. And then I was like, what about ginger and carrot? And it just stuck and it flowed. And the more we shopped it around, the more it made sense. Um, so that's where the name comes from. A lot of people think that I'm Ginger yeah, and me that too. <laughs> my husband's parrot, yeah. which is also really funny. And I was like, no, like we, those aren't our names. <laughs> yeah. I know, I know, I know. That's what I felt initially too, but you know, that's a really cool name. I really like it. Trivia question, uh, not a trivia, but you know, a random question for everyone listening to us live or even on replay. Would you name your business after your dogs or cats or whichever pet you have? Would you do this? 
if you do when you when we do the q and a come up on stage and let us know if you would do that let's actually get into the interview i want to actually get into the topic positioning your business from the gut so as a soul led brand photographer how do you interpret this concept like listening to your gut in the context of like running managing and even positioning your business i think it's really about self awareness um when it comes to intuition and connecting with your inner being it's about getting to know yourself i always say um you need to be an expert on you and it sounds like a simple thing but most people don't know who they are they don't know uh what they're here to do they don't know how they're designed to function how they best operate connect learn uh what brings them joy what frustrates and triggers them where there's opportunity for healing um all of it you need if if i were to ask you to write a manual on yourself most people could not do that and so that journey of self awareness is the soul journey because now that information will empower you to make the best decisions you know something that we hear a lot about is people business building businesses that they hate finding success and still not finding fulfillment um you know resenting what they have even though they ought to be grateful and whenever i hear things like that what that says to me is that they didn't build a life from their gut and from their soul they were building something for someone else it could be a parent it could be societal expectations could be just anyone in your life that fed you an idea of what their version of success is and that creates misalignment versus when you're building a life for you in the way that you are designed whether that's in business relationship friendship anything then from the very beginning from the get go it's going to really reap rewards it's going to give you the fulfillment um it's fun for you it's sustainable and it is the easiest place to garner success it's not to say that you can't do something that you're unconnected to successfully but it will never feel the same as when you're really doing something for you i think a common mistake is that people find that perspective selfish but it's actually the most selfless act that you can do because it allows you to show up as the best version of yourself and who are you when you're the best version of yourself you're the most generous you're the least competitive you know that there's plenty of resources um you serve your clients on a completely different level everyone around you whether you're aware of it or not benefits from that version of you so it is your responsibility to be so led and to whether whatever language you use it's not even about a spiritual practice it's about being as true to your core self as possible so that you're affecting the world as in the most positive way that makes sense so so it your interpretation about listening to your gut is mostly about you discovering and understanding who you are as an individual how would you use that information once you acquire once you understand who you are uh, once you understand your soul completely how would you put that into context in terms of managing your business running it how would you apply that knowledge so what i'll say is that it's an ongoing journey there's not really a destination it's really an ongoing experience but it is an intention in which you show up every single day so there's not going to be a point where i've got it all figured out because the only constant is change so you're constantly changing and growing and evolving so i'll start with that and how it becomes relevant in your business is in every single way so what it is that you choose to do whether what service or product you choose to sell 
how you choose to sell it, how you choose to market it, what your actual strengths are. A lot of folks are running themselves into the ground doing things that have nothing to do with what excites them, what they're naturally gifted at. And people think a little bit narrow-mindedly with gifts as it has to be something that's already defined as a service or a career path. And sometimes our gifts are more so characteristics about ourselves, usually things that we take for granted, usually things that we think that everyone is naturally adept at because it comes so easily to us that we don't even notice it. And that those elements can be integrated into your business. So for example, with me, I'm really, really intuitive and I can sense people's energy. I can feel people's emotions and reflect it back to them. It's almost like it, it feels like mind reading a little bit, but what it is is that I'm just really perceptive and observant of how people are carrying themselves in a space. And I don't sit around and do readings for people per se, but I'm a photographer. So what that means is that during my sessions where we're creatively planning or maybe on the photo shoot, I use that guidance to make creative decisions. I use that guidance to ask insightful questions to our clients so that they can give me really insightful answers and we can create something much more aligned for their business. So your gifts can be used in any way, maybe you have a talent for speaking and maybe you have a talent for storytelling and that can come across in your newsletter, that can come across in your podcast. So literally the possibilities are endless, but when you are tuned in and tapped in and you're making business decisions based on what excites you and what lights you up, that is going to make business a lot easier, a lot more fun for you. And it's much easier to generate success from that place. That, that makes perfect sense. I have a, another question, okay? One. So do you think intuition or this gut feeling which you're referring to, it's more information-based? A person who acquires more and more information would have a, a strong gut feeling towards something. And a person who does not have that much information may not have the same energy driven to, you know, to that. If, if you understand what I'm trying to say. Would your yeah, decision be biased because of that information? I think it's more of a feeling. So information does help in the sense that you can have language to understand what's happening to you. And the more language you have, the more you're able to express yourself and do that self-discovery. So information does help. You know, I did a lot of reading. I did a lot of studying. That does help. But you can't do that without being willing to feel the feelings, to feel your feelings, to hold space for others to feel their feelings, because that is your indicator. That is your compass. You know, we being attuned to your physical body and noticing like even everyone in the room right now, just notice how you're sitting. Is there any part of you that is tense? Is there any part of you that is slightly uncomfortable right now? And ask yourself, what can I do right now to just be 5% more comfortable? Like, is it getting that sip of water? Is it repositioning yourself in the chair that you're sitting in? Is it lying down? What can you do to be 5% more comfortable right now? Just that practice of being aware of yourself is something that can really change your thinking and change how you operate. And so it is a feeling. It's noticing your emotions, noticing what your body is telling you. And the more and more you practice that, the clearer you can hear yourself. So when it comes time to make a decision and your body responds, you can listen to that response. Some of us need to wait for our feelings to neutralize before we make a decision. And you might move a little slower. 
And you, you'll you know if this is you, if you're like, you know what, I need a few days to think about it. Or when you made decisions hastily, they didn't turn out very well. So you can kind of experiment as you're moving through the world and look back on times where you've experienced a lot of success and what the emotions were around that. And when I say success, I mean inside and out. And look on times where things felt really crappy for you and how those decisions came about. And you can kind of reverse engineer, okay, in my body, I know that when I'm excited, this is what it feels feels like. In my body, I know when I'm aligned, this is what it feels like. And once you get better and better at cueing into those signals, then it becomes more natural. I think what people forget, and this is one thing I'm so grateful for that I was taught um, from all those years of being in marching band is like practice is everything. Everything <laughs> involves practice. Even your natural gifts have to be nurtured and rehearsed. Like everything is just practice. So just try it out, right? <laughs> like it doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to be an expert. Try it out right now and see what happens when you take three deep breaths before you start any activity that requires your creative thinking. See mm -hmm. what happens before you sit at your desk and ask yourself, could I be a little bit more comfortable right now? Am I triggered at this moment? Should I respond to this email or should I wait five minutes for myself to calm down before I respond? It can be in the littlest, tiniest ways, but it will transform how you make decisions and it will transform how you feel. This is all self-care. This is what self-care really looks like. Self-care is tending to yourself like a garden and you're a seed. And every day you're coming out and checking on the garden and being like, what should I water today? What should I trim today? You know, what needs a little bit more fertilizer? Do I need more time? Should I leave the garden alone? Like tend to yourself like a garden and see what blossoms. That absolutely makes sense. So my understanding from what you said is that you, your body has to be in tuned with your gifts. And when it's in tuned with the gifts which you have, and you work on your gifts, you practice, make sure it's good, better, and you become the best over the course of time. And when you take certain decisions, your body is going to react that now this decision which you're taking it's not in conjunction to your gift or what is idly good for you. Am I right? Am I understanding that right, Nisa? Am I? So everyone has gifts. Everyone has things that are naturally easier for them, so much so that they could easily take it for granted. Um, these gifts might be your ability to think through something. It could be how you approach something, how you communicate, how you perceive things. It's not always like a hard and fast talent. And what the intuitive journey is, how I define it, is really your ability to know yourself on a deeper level, understand how to read your body's signals and how to read your emotions so that you can understand what those energies are telling you. Because there's constantly things being communicated to you that will give you insightful answers, insightful solutions, or just kind of information about how you need to operate that day or in that moment. And all we're really doing is getting better and better at hearing this communication. So to answer your previous question about is it information or is it something else? It's really just your ability to listen. You're really just getting better and better at listening to yourself, listening to your body, listening to your emotions. And from that place, you get a lot better at listening to the world around you. So now imagine that you're empowered in this way, even if it's just a little bit more each day. And what would you do now that you have all of this context and all this information? How might you treat people now that you understand a little bit more each day how everything is kind of unfolding? So that's really what the intuitive journey is mostly about. 
This is so cool and very very insightful. I hope you guys who are listening to our conversation are really enjoying uh, what Nisa is throwing in at you guys and including myself. So Nisa, now do you think at at at, at a certain point when uh, we are relying on our body and the signals and emotions, do you think uh, there could be a difference between what comes from the gut and something which is rational decision making process especially when you are trying to build your business and shape your business how can you distinguish uh, the difference between these two well the gut doesn't need justification only your mind needs that and this is an important distinction to make when it comes to rational thinking um this sort of logic is something that's really stems from some of the systems in the world that we're living in like white supremacy um the patriarchy really focuses on rational thinking but the truth is is that you can rationalize anything so many atrocities in the world are rationalized and the mistake here is to think that intuitive thinking is not reliable and so we need our brains to come in and be rational and just by nature of like what i just said you can see there's automatically this power dynamic that's happening here but when you understand that you can trust the intuitive process and use it to guide you in your reality in your present world you can use your intuitive process to think I'll give you a perfect perfect example was with the marketing that Ginger and Carrot was doing. We felt so disconnected. We felt like we weren't really having conversations with people. We felt like no one was really seeing our content. And so we set our Instagram on autopilot and decided, well, we're best when we show up in person. We're best when we really connect with people face to face. So we focused more on opportunities like this to be on a podcast with you, Jason, and also in person events. And that made marketing so much more fun, so much easier. We're actually able to connect with people like right now I'm talking to eight people, nine people including you. And that was something that wasn't happening with the way that we were marketing before when we start to get into the shoulds i should be doing this i should be doing that instead of listening to what feels exciting what feels natural that making decisions from that place you might be building a business that is very different than how you imagined it but it's going to be a lot more sustainable for you to hold success because it's much more natural for you. So understand that the mind is there to protect you. Your brain's job just wants to keep you safe. Your brain just wants to make sure that everything is going smoothly. And whenever it senses discomfort, whenever it senses that you're going off the beaten path, it's going to be like, "Hey, hey, hey." And it's going to rationalize and convince you of all the ways that you need to do the quote-unquote smart thing because your brain has to see the full picture. It has to see every step, the entire path has to be illuminated. Your intuition doesn't need that. Your intuition just has the insight and it doesn't need an explanation, a connection, a justification. And oftentimes when you go down that path and everything is revealed or you see the result of that, you there's no way you could have predicted how that would have turned out. It's like it becomes a little bit more synchronicitous. It becomes a little bit more um in the flow. And that's what we talk about with flow and just trusting. And because you know that you're being led and you don't have to have everything illuminated and everything figured out. When you're in flow, you actually move a lot faster because you're putting one foot in front of the other. But when you're rationalizing everything and everything's got to be figured out, you can stay stuck in that place for a very long time behind the need for everything to be rationalized and practical. So 
that's just something that is my thought <laughs> on rationalization. I I have to really say, Nisa, like you know, the thing which really shook me from what you said was your statement. Your gut does not need justification. It's your mind who craves for justification. So that was a clear winner. That was an eye opener for me, and it totally fucking makes sense. That is so freaking true. And uh, what you said about uh, you know. how does that how does your body feels when you are you excited i do you does it feel natural if you lean on to that that's what you should do and not what you're supposed to do so this is phenomenal uh, information which you're sharing with my listeners nisa i really really i'm grateful and thankful that we both decided to uh, discuss this specific topic today so i'm really i'm really thrilled Uh, you know how this conversation leads ahead so my next question would be at some point when you're doing all these decision making things how do you make sure by following your gut everything is in alignment with your soul purpose and vision that is such an interesting question because you can never really be 100% sure about anything I really view it as an experiment. So the most important piece is that you're really clear on what your vision is. You know where you're headed. And that vision can be something as simple as I want to work with people that I that we share mutual respect. Right? It may not even be like an industry, it may not even be like a revenue goal or anything. It's like I just want to work with people who really respect me and I really respect them. like that can be the vision for right now and as you take steps and move into the that, that direction and get closer the vision clarifies and the vision expands you know when tabari and i started ginger and carrot productions we were like we want to be creative people for a living that was the vision we want to be creative people for a living and then we started doing that we were like oh we want to be creative people for a living and work with people who share our values and then the vision expanded and then it was we wanted to create a culture of inclusivity and safe spaces that expanded the vision so your vision can evolve and that is how you know that you're aligned that's how you know you're on the beaten path when you start to feel disconnected when you start to feel dread when you start to feel like i don't want to do this that is when you know something is out of alignment you're avoiding something and everyone says like just outsource but It's not necessarily about that because even outsourcing something isn't avoiding it. Avoiding it is just like I'm going to pretend it doesn't exist. Like for a lot of us that might be our finances and taxes or hiring. And it is important to go to that little hole that you're hiding and say like what am I afraid of here? What is coming up for me when I think about my taxes or when i think about hiring or some of these things that i'm just kind of like dreading what is coming up for me there's a story there and this could be a journal exercise this could be a a session with your coach this could be a conversation but it's like what is the story there and is that story true and who does that narrative belong to so often it's not even your stuff it's somebody else's stuff and sifting through that can help you clear some of the things that might be causing that procrastination and you might need to have a shift in perspective or you might need to have a shift in narrative so that you can actually tackle it head on and that's the beautiful thing about entrepreneurship is that it uniquely presents you with opportunities to clear out some of those stories that are no longer serving you and the more you seek alignment the more you pay attention to the signals and the information your body and your feelings are telling you the more you can clear up these stories and create alignment and so it is a piece by piece process but it makes your life a little bit easier. There's so many things that throughout your day would make things slightly better. And 
I think taking the pressure off from being like totally enlightened and making every decision perfect and just asking yourself like, how can my business be a little bit more aligned to my light today? Like right now, how can I show up in this meeting? How can I write this email in a place that's aligned with this vision that I've articulated? Whether it's, I wanna work with people who respect me, who I respect. How can I make a decision in that direction little by little each day? So that's where that practice piece comes in again at just getting better and better at it. But it really can start from that place of clarifying your vision and then taking steps towards that vision while the vision expands as you move forward. Absolutely. I I could not agree with you more. But I have to say, Nisa, I have also encountered numerous entrepreneurs when you, you know, when they share their vision, okay, and if this vision is not something extraordinary, something which really defines humanity or something which is for the greater good, if you don't have something of that sort, Nisa, people look down on you. you They, They feel like, you know, you're not really doing everything you're supposed to do. And I I feel a lot of marketers and strategists who are out there do put a lot of pressure on entrepreneurs to have like a big vision. What would you say to those folks? So my message is actually not even to the folks who feel like their vision is too small. My message is to the folks who are applying that pressure because you first have to understand that they are coming from a place of lack and fear. They are coming from a place of not enough, right? Because the only reason why you're putting out the message out to the world that you're not enough is because they already feel that. We're all just projecting what we think about ourselves on everyone else. If you honestly feel like an emotional goal is not a big enough vision, then there's something about you that you feel like is not enough. If you look at anyone else's life that has nothing to do with you and think that's not good enough or that's too small, there's something about you. And so for everyone that's listening, when you come across content like this that uses shame in order to get you to take action, pause for a second and ask yourself, where is this person coming from? Just because somebody has a certain level of perceived success does not mean that they are ahead of you. This is not a race where people are ahead and other people are behind. We are all just in our own little worlds, in our own orbit. And I'm doing my own thing and someone else is doing their own thing and someone else is doing what they what they want to do. So literally, we're not even running, right? Some of us are sitting down. Some of us are flying. Some of us are crawling. So like, let's understand like what this picture even looks like. And as an entrepreneur, that's why the vision is so important, because if it is your vision, to work with people who respect you, who you respect. And that's the vision. That's the big dream, right? And you focus on that. While someone else might have a dream of like having a nine-figure empire, and that's their dream, and they can focus on that. It's so important to know to align yourself with the people who are going to help you get to where you want to go. It doesn't make sense to join a mastermind for people who want to grow their business to nine figures. Maybe it makes sense to work with a community of entrepreneurs who are building sustainable solopreneurships, right? Maybe it would be cool to join a community or a meetup group of digital nomads who only work a couple hours a week. That's why the vision is so important so that you understand what is for you and what is not for you. And it's not to say that anything is better or worse, but it's to say that does it belong to you right now in this moment? And really be hypervigilant of people who instill shame. I call them unconscious millionaires, (laughs) people who instill shame because they're still experiencing shame and not enoughness and smallness in that wealth. So you can have all of this awareness of yourself 
and not have certain levels of revenue and be much more fulfilled and be happy. And I've also seen people who make tens of millions and they're thriving. And when you see the difference, like when you see, oh, okay, this person is lit up, this person is doing their thing, they are, they're firing on all cylinders in terms of wealth, health, and love and relationships. That is someone who will never make you feel like what you're doing is not good enough. That is someone who will see where you're at and get excited for you and be like, that's a beautiful place to be because they're looking at your energy and being like, clearly this is important to you. Clearly this is something that you value and I'm going to help you get there instead of putting their expectations of their lives onto you. That's a really important distinction to make whenever you're looking for mentorship and whenever you're hiring people as well. You need to make sure the people are hiring are also, a, their vision aligns with your vision. You know, what they're here to do is mutually beneficial, right? You don't hire people so that they can help you get to a place. You hire people because they were already on a mission for themselves. Just so happens that our missions really benefit each other. We can be allies right now. And that makes for a great team. But if you're just doing something for somebody else to make them happy, that's kind of a recipe of disaster. And so that's a really important distinction to make here. This is so cool, Nisa. I'm, I'm thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying this conversation. Guys, if you are listening uh, to this live episode on LinkedIn, please give a a thumbs up or any emoji of your choice because I think Nisa has been throwing some bombs left, right and center, entertaining us, educating us. And I think this is super, super cool. Thank you so much, guys, for your love and support. All right. You know, at, at some point, okay, and out of all those things which you said, at some point, you might reach a stage wherein there is a lot of uncertainty and there could be challenges you would be experiencing in your business. At that point of time, what practice or techniques would you recommend which will help us to tap into uh, that intuition, that gut of ours, and to tackle these things? I'm so excited that you asked this question because this was something that Tabari and I experienced at the top of 2023. And it's so important to take this time to slow down right? So we have the belief that everything that is that we're experience that we experience can be to our benefit. So we start with that belief. Everything that we're experiencing is teaching us something and giving us a gift. There is a gift here. So with that understanding, then the question isn't, how do I get out of this? How do I fix this? Because if if you're a nail, if you're a hammer, right? Everything's a nail. It's that. It's what, where's the lesson? Where's the gift? Is the gift in that I have more time to spend with loved ones? Is the gift that I get to see how strong my community really is in supporting me? Is the gift that I get to learn who in my life doesn't need to be here anymore, whether it's in business or in my personal life. Maybe I didn't need that social media manager. Maybe I didn't need that contractor. And so now let me minimize and restructure. Is the gift that I need to really clarify my message. Maybe my message wasn't as clear as I thought. And now I'm going to operate differently. And now I get to rebuild and redo the foundation, right? Like when you find out that there needs to be repairs in a home, for example, you don't think, oh my God, I'm going to burn my house to the ground because I found out that I had a termite situation. Like, no, you, you say, okay, let me clear some things out. Let me clean the house. Let me, you know, minimize a little bit. I'm going to hire a professional or I'm going to get the support that I need. I'm going to lean on my friends and my family and we're going to solve the termite issue. And then when you solve that, think about all the learnings you have. Now you know exactly what to do, what not to do. Your house is stronger, better than ever. You've given more value to your home. You know what to look for the next time you buy a next another home. You can share your experiences with your friends. You end up failing up. 
like this experience ended up putting you in a completely different place afterwards because of how you had to overcome the situation. So understand that like challenges and slow periods and low periods are not there to punish you for anything. But, and we may not even know why they're there. But what we do know is that in every experience, there is a gift. So make it your mission to find that gift. You will find anything you look for. So look for the gift. It's there and you'll find it and you'll fail up. And that is my favorite part about entrepreneurship. That is the best um, outcome of this. And it reduces the fear because now it's not, what if I fail? Well, you know, you'll be better off. So we're not afraid of failing anymore, right? So really it, it, build resilience and that's that's the gift in times like of uncertainty the truth is is that you're never a hundred percent certain about anything no nine to five no hourly wage no business is a hundred percent on anything but when you are tuned in to who you are why you're here who you're doing it for, and you know that you're being guided, that level of trust is really the only certainty you'll ever have in this world. Everything else is out of your control. So just keep looking for the gift. Just keep looking for how this will serve you and it will serve you. Absolutely. Every experience is a gift. You know, I love it. Thank you so much for sharing that, Nisa. This is this is ton of value which you're sharing with my listeners. I want to let the people know who are listening to us live that if you are interested in coming up on stage virtually and if you would like to say hi to Nisa or ask a question or contribute to what we have been discussing so far, you're welcome to do so. Please raise your hand. I would be happy to bring you up. Why we are actually waiting for listeners to join uh, the stage, Nisa, I happen to you know have another question. Okay, so I understand... Every experience is a gift and you learn something from it and, and you grow and you try to fix it and, and go from there. Okay. At, at, at some point, your business would also reach a stage wherein the market, the demand, things keep changing, twisting. You know, there's always something, some, something shiny, always coming up in the marketplace, something new, something fresh. How would you keep on tapping into that gut feeling to stay relevant? First, you need to understand that relevance is irrelevant. <laughs> Relevant to who? You know what I mean? Get out of that place of I have to prove myself to somebody. You don't have to prove yourself. You are here to serve. And that's why it's so important to follow your excitement and to be in alignment with what lights you up because that means every day, day in and day out, through the good and the bad, you're fired up. So you've already won. So now what is there left to prove? Who are you going to be relevant to now? When you belong to yourself, it doesn't matter what's going on around you because you already know where you stand right? When you're in a position of, I'm here to serve, I have something to offer and I am here to serve and people want it. More people want what I have to offer than I can even handle myself, than my entire industry can even handle. And when you're coming at it from that position, what is relevance? What is it for? Hello, I'm here to help you. I have something to offer. It's not about relevance. It's about service. Who can I help? How can I make an introduction to somebody? How can I make something a little bit easier? What value can I give today in my podcast, in my newsletter, in my content, in a conversation that I'm having, right? How can I learn what's going on in my industry so that I understand what's relevant for me and what's not relevant for me? But it's not about proving relevance to the market and to your audience. It's about being in service to them. When you're coming from that place of, I have something for you, I'm here to help you get to where you want to go. And I am confident in my ability to do that, whether it's through a conversation or through us engaging in business together, 
then you're not out here trying to be seen and flailing around and being like, nobody sees me. Nobody sees me. Do you see yourself? Do you recognize yourself? Do you belong to yourself? Right? Like all of these are always questions about self. It's not about other people, even in a business of service. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I agree with you 100% on this. This this is actually so true. So, so what I like to ask you next is that, you know, at some point you, you know, you have shared some really cool nuggets in terms of why you should follow your gut instincts. And I agree with everything which you have shared. Why do you think entrepreneurs are hesitant to rely on their intuition? What is this fear they have of making wrong decisions and not following their gut? Why do people do that? Why don't they listen to their intuition? Well, you have to understand that we live in a larger culture, especially if you are if you grow up in Western society or a culture that's influenced by Western society that they beat that out of you immediately, right? <laughs> From the time that you go to school or church or the mosque or wherever it is that you go, they are taking you away from your intuition. And so I always say, it doesn't matter what school you go to, it doesn't matter how prestigious or how expensive, they're all teaching the same thing, which is to take you away from your intuition. That is what they're teaching you. They are teaching you need to do things the way that we do things so that these systems can operate the way that they're designed. So you're not crazy for feeling a little disconnected because it was designed that way. It was designed. Think about any time that you fell and somebody told you, oh, you're okay. Don't cry. You're fine when you know you're not. Think about all the times that you've spoken up about something and you weren't believed. Think about the times where you went back and forth or you thought you knew what you wanted to do and somebody talked you out of it, right? Like in so many ways, in so many institutions around us, we are told to go with the conscious mind, the rational mind, and to stay away from our body, that we cannot trust our body. This happens in almost every institution, our, med our healthcare, education, religion, like every level this is happening. So the work of re-remembering your intuition, which comes so naturally and so easily for us as children, as babies, the work of re-remembering that, because we already have it, is radical work because you're going against conditioning. You're going, for a lot of us, you're going against your parents, your siblings, your mentors, your teachers. You're going against almost everyone by doing that you know i mean even in the united states we have a history of the salem witch trials like we literally used to burn people for thinking about this like there is a reason for this right so you're reclaiming something that was always there that something that many cultures have practiced for generations upon generations you're reclaiming something that was your natural birthright and you're doing it against the flow and the river of the culture scape. So it makes sense. It makes sense that you're like, why would I do that? Of course you have fear against doing something that feels new, that goes against everything you've been taught that is natural. But, and that's your body's way of protecting you again. So we can thank our brain and say, I know you're trying to protect me. I know this is uncomfortable. But this is going to be so great. And I, I appreciate how you've been serving me. I appreciate how you've been protecting me. And we're going to do this thing over here. And the better and better you get at it, the easier it gets. And the result is that you feel lighter. <laughs> you know, when you're only walking around with your stuff, it's lighter. But when you feel the weight of the world on your shoulder, when you feel the pressure, when you feel overwhelmed, that's energy that doesn't belong to you. That's energy that was put upon you, placed upon you. 
So that's why people are afraid. It makes sense. You're you're totally justified in that feeling. And fear is not anything to judge negatively of like, oh, if it wasn't for fear, don't judge fear. Thank fear. Thank you for calling this to my attention because now I can focus on healing that area. Thank you for protecting me because you always have protected me. And now we're okay and we're going to move forward. All of these parts, all of these components of your thinking, it's all you. So you need to thank it, give it a big hug, breathe with it, hear it out, listen to it because it's you and you're not going anywhere. Everywhere you go, there you are. So don't judge it, accept it, embrace it, give it that grace and move forward, move through it, feel it and move through it. And that's how fear subsides. But you have every right to feel how you want to feel because this definitely came from very intentional, very built-in systems in our culture and in society. Absolutely. But, you know, fighting with the system being disconnected to such an extent, it does come with a price, right? You know, do you think everybody would be willing to take that price, take that hit, to be different, to be like a misfit? and just follow your heart and your gut. Do you think people would be willing to do it? I think there's a choice. Some people think that the pain of fitting in, and it is painful, is less than the pain of honoring yourself. And some people think that the pain of honoring yourself is less than the pain of fitting in, and you make a choice. And you know, when you made that choice, you know where other people stand. (laughs) And that's what it is. Everybody's not going to do that. Everyone is not going to follow their soul. And the people who don't or who are not on that path, like they get triggered so much. Like when you know you've been in a room with somebody who is fully self-expressed, whatever that looks like, and you feel like, oh, they're doing too much or why are they like that? Even as somebody who's super quiet, in a room and they're like comfortable in that you're like what's up with what's up with them why are they so quiet like it's like why do you feel the need for others to perform right so that's what's so interesting it's like it really is up to you it really is your choice on what is the path to least resistance and for me my choice didn't feel like much of a choice because i found it excruciatingly painful to fit in but you know, my choice was to honor myself and it is, it feels a lot better. It feels a lot clearer. It feels a lot lighter. And of course I feel my emotions on a deeper level. I'm a crier. I express things, I speak up. Um, sometimes I sit in silence in uncomfortable situations and honoring yourself oftentimes looks like moving a little bit differently than how people expect. And that is something that I accept. And that's something that I think is worth it. Because when that scenario is over, I come home, I know I was true to myself. I know that I honored myself. But whenever I feel that I did something just to fit in, even if it was like a, you know, I kept myself kind of safer in the moment, maybe emotionally, I always regret that. That's just been my experience. I always feel like I dishonored myself in those moments. And of course, when it comes to keeping yourself physically safe, that's the most important thing. But more often than not, when I am really showing up for myself internally first, I tend to attract much safer people around me in my lives in the work that I do or just strangers, just as I'm navigating the world, my experience tends to be that It just sort of feels like I'm protected. Like I can even give you this really fun, quick story. Yeah, sure. There was a time where I was on the train and I was taking the train to downtown LA. It's like a really straightforward path from where I live. And someone came on the train and they were just irate. They were just so angry and they were throwing things and they were throwing things in my direction. And I was listening to a podcast. I was so still. I didn't talk to anyone. And it was pretty packed. 
And immediately everyone around me that I thought didn't even notice me. One woman was talking to herself the entire time. Some other guy was just rocking back and forth. Immediately they got very clear and very protective of me and confronted the guy and got him to calm down. And I didn't say a word. I just sat there. I just sat there and I just like received this like communal support from the people around me, people who I previously thought were not coherent in the, in the space that we were in. And so that's, that's just been my experience of kind of like the result of this daily practice. Um, and so for me, it's worth it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love what you said. Uh, you have a choice either fitting in versus honoring yourself and honoring yourself does make a lot of sense because then uh, you're doing things which really gives you that peace of mind, really brings harmony to your soul. And it, it helps you to have clarity and focus the way you, sh you know, things should be. So I appreciate you sharing all this wealth of wisdom, Nisa. You know, I'm truly grateful. Let's actually take a quick break. I have a few announcements I like to make and we will continue with the interview. And people who are listening in the uh, listening lounge, if you do like to come up, uh, please do not hesitate. Please raise your hand. I will be happy to bring you on and you can ask questions, say hi. You know, just make it just make it uh, make it interesting, unique, share your perspective, share your thoughts on what has been shared so far. I think this really helps. Let's have an interactive and engaging conversation. So let's take a quick break. I hope you guys are enjoying the adventure we are on the dark side of entrepreneurship uh, well i have a special request for you while you're on break take a moment to hit that follow button and leave a rating and review on spotify or apple Podcasts. if you're on linkedin do not forget to hit that follow button on linkedin because i'm going to be sharing a lot of content around entrepreneurship and i'm positive this is going to help you guys your feedback is like a fuel for our journey helping us steer towards greater heights leaving a review you're not only just supporting the show but you're also helping other listeners discover valuable insights and strategies for their entrepreneurial journey so join me in this quest to empower entrepreneurs worldwide and together let's illuminate the dark side of entrepreneurship All right, so we have Leslie who has joined the conversation and Leslie can relate why slowing down makes a lot of sense, you know, because Leslie and me offline, we always keep on discussing about why it's important to slow down. Leslie, welcome to the podcast. Do you have a question? Uh, would you like to contribute to this conversation or simply say hi to both of us? Well, first of all, I wanted to say hi. And also, um, I wanted to thank your guest. Um, it, it's really empowering and it's just so nice to hear that there are people like the uh us out there that are intuitive you know we would joke jason and i about being woo woo or you know me as a reiki practitioner um so so kudos to you and and thank you for bringing that up and i think uh, i was kind of laughing inside when you were talking about you know people pitching certain things um or um, tap, tapping into our vulnerability when um, there are seminars that maybe I will listen to. And right off the bat, they start off with, what are your weaknesses? You know, they're trying to draw out like negativities or things that you've maybe overcome or you're empowered at this point um, that was down from years ago, things that you've been working on. Um, but they're drawing that out of you. So you would jump on board to get that package or something that, you know, as an afterthought, you would say, do I really need that? Why did I do that? I mean, I, I'm at a different level in my life now. My wisdom is there. So thank you, Nefsa, for that. 
um, yeah, that's all I wanted to share. Um, I really have been enjoying this uh, conversation today. Thank you so much, Leslie. That was amazing. Thank you so much for that, Leslie. Please continue to be on stage. And if anybody else is interested in coming up, please do not hesitate. So my next question, uh, you know, is I, I kind of ask this question to all my guests. Okay. You sound more like a, a coach, Nisa. This is just my personal opinion. Is there, do you think at some point you might let go of photography and maybe keep that just as a hobby and move into life coaching? It is so funny that you asked that question because I am a life coach. And um, for those of us who are familiar with human design, I'm a manifesting generator. And so for me, what that looks like is being a multi-passionate, a multi-hyphenate. That is how I thrive. I tend to show up on deeper levels when I have a couple of different projects going on. And so I absolutely love my creativity and my photography and videography and storytelling and plan to do that for as long as I can and empower other creatives to do it. And I also love helping women in business heal their relationship with money because it's a journey that we're all on for the rest of our lives. And it makes it kind of like you said, it further is that journey of taking the dark side of entrepreneurship. And oftentimes that healing piece is exactly the missing element when it comes to the issues we faced in our marketing, the issues that we've faced with hiring, or even how to manage and steward the flow of money, being comfortable with money coming in and going out. And that's something that I've grown very, very passionate about as a result of co-owning and operating Ginger and Carrot Productions. And I always talk about my coaching alongside my content business because it goes hand in hand. Like we're all in business here to make money and we're all using money as this beautiful tool to be fully self-expressed, to show up in the world and to create the world that we want to see. And that requires some healing and some care and some grace. And that is the other part of the work that I do. So I'm so glad that you asked about that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Nisa, tell me what's the difference, okay, between you as a, a master manifester versus somebody who claims to be a manifester? Because I've been hearing about these people who do manifestation. And to be quite honest, you know, they don't sound very reliable. What's What's the difference? So the manifesting generator type in human design really refers to the type um, and the way that you function in the world. So human design is a modality that combines a few different uh, philosophies like astrology, science, um, and a few other spiritual wisdoms to give you a manual of how you function in the world. Um, so a couple of the types are manifesting generators, projectors, um, manifestors, and there's a couple others that I'm blanking on in this moment. But for me, what that means is that there's a couple of ways that I like to function in the world. I'm an emotional authority. And that means that I have to weigh out my feelings, whether good or bad, before I can make a decision. I thrive when I have multiple aspects going on in my life. So I'm uniquely designed to be multi-passionate, multi-hyphenate. And the downside of that is that when I'm not aligned, I can feel very frustrated and very stuck. And so everyone has a type based on the day and time and year they were born and all of these other fun details about ourselves. And I use this methodology to help deepen that knowledge of myself. And there's a couple of self-assessments that I've used to help learn about what I'm great at and what my gifts are. And this one I particularly love because it's not just about work, it's about life and how we show up in any context. 
and it re and it's sort of things that you know about yourself intuitively like you know you're like oh yeah i am happier when i'm like this but sometimes those things from the culture from school or parents are kind of stomped out of us a little bit sometimes that fire is put out because we're told you can't do it this way or it can't be this way but when you find out that not only can it be that way but it's really the only way you can function and be happy then you know that there's really only one option if you want to feel that sense of fulfillment and so the way that i the way that manifestation just as a term is defined is um bringing something into your reality so we're constantly manifesting everyone every moment of every day we're constantly manifesting it's not something that we turn on or off except when we're asleep and so all of our behaviors um, manifest something um people who teach manifestation there's so many different ways to approach it everyone does it differently some people kind of approach it in a very action-oriented way others approach it in a very energetic way and it's not really any right or wrong it's really doing what resonates for you and understanding well if i am influencing the world around me with my thoughts and my actions and my feelings and if that's happening anyway then how can i use and leverage my thoughts and feelings to get the outcomes that i prefer and that's all this is really teaching us like we know in quantum physics that like attracts like we know that we're all vibrating energies and we know that everything is energy we also know that nothing can be created or destroyed so with that understanding how can we use that information for our highest good and so really we experience the levels of success and when i say success i mean any way that it shows up in health and joy and happy feelings money relationships serendipities and any way that you define it to the degree that we can hold it to the degree that we are aligned with it and so what's interesting about intentionally manifesting is really just testing out all the different ways that we can play and co-create with these other energies in order to create something really magical that we want and it's the fun part i think if it's starting to get not fun for you then there is maybe some story there about what's real what's not real what's possible um and you don't have to understand it you know my favorite quote from esther hicks is i don't have to understand how electricity works to turn on the lights you just do it and it works and i trust that it works and i think manifestation is just that it's like we all have the ability to create the world around us and we don't have to understand it in order to do it so that's the beautiful thing about it this is so cool i think leslie i, I think leslie also took the same thing she's also uh <laughs> leslie you know are you also a manifester at this moment of time do you still uh yeah i'm a manifesting generator and um i worked with a, a fellow practitioner of mine that does this and she does a lot of other modalities um so yeah and my path of life is three so three sixes when i was born um and it, it fits me you know uh and you know jason that i'm always you know like 100% in passionate multiple projects going on and if there's something that doesn't really resonate with me it's not that i would say definitely no but i'd kind of put things on a back burner if somebody feels oh you should do this with me and if i don't really feel it and i use my intuitiveness i kind of let it go but the public speaking being a messenger on this planet and just sharing my knowledge and passion uh, it kind of is in line with what i am so i love that i, I love hearing that there are fellow manifesting generators here today and maybe you are too jason we'll have to i'll i'll show <laughs> see yeah <laughs> lisa one personal question okay in you yes. in the beginning you i i remember you you mentioned that you know you can feel you are very intuitive and you can see you can feel vibration uh, so if the if, if let's say that there is someone you know who is sending out these negative signals you know who not does not really appreciate what you do and who you are how would you defend yourself or stay away 
or protect yourself from that negative energy what would you do like i don't know what i would do i would may not talk to that individual uh, or maybe walk away from it what would you do you know this is easier said than done and i'm not perfect at this but when i am able to do this this is what works first i have to understand like the context of like is this somebody that i have to interact with is this somebody that i need to engage with or not if it's somebody that i don't need to engage with like someone on the internet a stranger i won't i literally will just walk past people and i won't say a word because they don't deserve or need my energy right now the other thing it's important to remember is that people are drawn to their needs so someone who you know, I have this effect on people. I used to call it helping lady face where anytime anyone needed help out in the grocery store, on a parking lot, literally anywhere, they would skip through the entire crowd and find me and be like, you, you can help me track down my Uber, like crazy things. Like you can help me find my kids, like whatever it is, people are like, you're the person that is going to help me. And I finally realized that it's really just my natural light energy. And so when someone is coming towards me with negativity, it's really because they need some light. And whether they're aware of it or not, they know that I have it and they know that they need it. So now it becomes a question of, do I have anything to give this person? I love this beautiful quote that I got from a meditation from the Mind Valley app. But it was this beautiful fable of this monk who was super deeply spiritual and was robbed and came back to find everything gone. And their response was, oh my gosh, that poor thief. I wish I could have given them the moon. And I thought that was just so like i was like okay that's the bar of like <laughs> you know the the energy work that's the bar that i'm working myself towards because you realize that like no one can take from you because you have this like deep understanding of self and so for me it starts with grace and empathy and understanding that that person is coming from a place of hurt and pain and is looking for something because we don't like to stay in that pain forever, that everything that they are experiencing and putting towards me is really just how they feel about themselves. So if people feel like I'm doing too much or not enough, it's because they feel like under expressed or that they are not enough. If people feel feel like why would you do that like i get that feedback a lot is like why are you putting yourself out there for business isn't it hard da, 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 da. and it's because there's things that, and passions that they wanted to do that they talk themselves out of and now they're projecting their fears onto me and so i try to understand and give them grace and anytime i'm in this inability to give that person grace, really, I'm an inability to give myself grace, because I know what it's like to feel underexpressed. I know what it's like to spend years in a career that wasn't right for me. I know what it feels like to be jealous and want something and believe that I can't have it. I've experienced all of those things. So there's not really anything that different about me and this person who's in their negative energy, they're having a very human experience. Really, the question is just like, what do I need to do to keep myself safe? And that's a case by case scenario. Do I feel perfectly safe? And I just feel like this person is annoying, then cool, like, I'm safe, there's not much I need to do. Do I feel unsafe? I need to separate myself and create physical space between us? I'll do that as well. Um, and then this is the least uh, common scenario, but sometimes you have to speak up. So sometimes there's a time where you have to say, the way that you're acting, I don't appreciate it. I can count on one hand the amount of times I've had to do this, but 
every single time I've done it, I haven't regretted it. Um, whether it's speaking up because someone is acting inappropriately. There was a time where I was at the farmer's market and the line was getting really long and the folks working at the farmer's market um, didn't speak a word of English. Everyone was getting angry and irate and the person behind me was yelling at the employee over me. And I turned around and I said to that person, you need to be more patient right now. The way that you're acting is not helping this process at all. And you need to give that person grace. You need to stop what you're doing. And literally everyone around us was like, oh, you know, like they were like shocked. And that person calmed down and quieted down. And like, so every situation is different and it depends on where the safety is and where the privilege is and how I can navigate. Um, and that's where your intuition comes in. We're just like, okay, what is the best right thing for me to do? And afterwards you can think, was it the best thing for me to do? Like, did, <laughs> did that feel good? You know, was that for me? Was that for them? And you can kind of tweak and, you know, keep going every time, but it is, it is a practice and it's not a perfect practice. It's messy. It's a messy practice, but it does start with grace. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. So I wanted to ask you before we wrap things up, I wanted to ask you a funny question, not just, just to lighten things up before we end our show. So let's have some rapid fire questions. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I wanted to, you are, you're into photography and, and I have noticed people who are into photography, they are heavily into cameras and lenses. Maybe they like a specific camera. Maybe they really like a specific lens. What would be your favorite go-to camera or a lens you, which you really like to use a lot? I'm going to say it's so 100. It's interesting. I have a 100 milliliter macro lens. Um, and I always say I'm not a technical photographer. I don't, I'm not a gearhead. I don't have a lot of gear. What I care about when it comes to my work is the storytelling. But the lens that I just am in love with, I use as much as I can, and it informs my style is that 100 milliliter macro. I love close up shots. I love moments. I love when you can see people's hair standing up on their arm. Like that to me is what makes life feel like life. And that's, you can always tell when I've shot something compared to when Jabari's shot something because of just how tight of a shot it is. Um, so that's probably my favorite lens. Mm, interesting. How about a camera? Would all kind of cameras would work or do you like anything specific? We have a Nikon house, but I'm not married to Nikon. Um, I use whatever needs to be used. You know, sometimes we use our Lumix for video. Sometimes we use the Nikon depending on the color that we want. It's really just like, what is the tool that's going to help us get the result that we want? I know some photographers really care about gear. I am a photographer, maybe because I got started a little bit later professionally. The only thing I care about are the results and how my clients feel. Um, I have a lot more opinions about that than I do about the gear that I use. Next year, you might see me with all Sony equipment, and I wouldn't feel any sort of way about that. Um, I have no attachments to the gear that we use but i do have attachments to the stories that we're telling and so that's what matters to me the most that is so cool i have a common question for you and leslie both who are on stage okay i'll start off with you and then move to leslie okay if you could photog uh, you know photograph any event in history could be personal or could be a part of history which one would it be You know, I was just thinking about this recently, and if I could photograph any event in history, it could be personal. I also, would, could be could be as a part of history. Go ahead. Yeah, I would love to be. I would have loved to have been a photographer on the set of Insecure. So, the Insecure was a show that came out on HBO a few years back. There was five seasons of it. 
It was created and written by Issa Rae and her team. And Issa Rae single-handedly <laughs> completely changed the landscape for film as it relates to Black people by telling a story about regular Black people and the regular things that they go through. So it wasn't this big, traumatic slave narrative. It wasn't this all-knowing, all-strength hero narrative. It was just like, hey, these are some girls. They're in LA. They have regular jobs. They have a little bit of drama, and they're navigating life. And it was so grounded and so relatable. And it gave so many others the permission and the opportunity to tell more stories like that instead of fitting into these very narrow tropes that Hollywood previously had for Black characters and black leads and just being on the set and being able to photograph moments between scenes i would have loved that i would have i would still love that because she's still creating tons of content right now um that is something that i absolutely would love because just being a part of that being a part of that movement and it, it changed television forever it changed obviously her life forever having had so much success there that's something that I would have loved to do. Again, for the story that needed to be told and all the stories that haven't been told yet that need to be told. That is so cool, Nisa. I appreciate you sharing that. I want to actually hear from Leslie. Leslie, if you could photograph any event in history, could be personal also, which one would it be? Well, I've always, even as a little girl, been fascinated, used to watch In Search Of with Leonard Nimoy, um, which is all about the seven wonders of the world. Um, and it would be the um, building of the pyramids. There are so many theories behind what did they use? Was Were there higher intelligence that helped us uh, come from another galaxy, possibly? You know, I, I kind of geek out on history and whatnot. I would love to be there just um, photographing and really just experiencing the awe and wonderment of them building these colossal structures. That is so cool. You also believe in ancient Indians, apparently. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We'd be too selfish to think that we would be the only beings of intelligence in this, you know, uh, this solar system and who knows to infinity and what is out there. So, yes, I, I do. I geek out on that. Absolutely. Absolutely. I want to give you, uh, give you enough time, Nisa, to promote yourself. So tell us how can people reach out to you? What kind of services you offer personally and your business offers and if there is any sort of events webinars seminars anything lined up which people can participate and meet you greet you one-on-one -on -one or maybe virtually absolutely so first of all i just want to say thank you for having me this was an awesome awesome conversation and it, we had such a great crowd and it was really great to do my first LinkedIn Live event. Um, so with Ginger and Carrot Productions, our flagship offering is that we do brand videos. And what that is, is an awesome way to tell your story or tell a particular story that you want to share about your brand or about your business or something that you're launching. And that comes along with great video assets that you can use for YouTube, for social, for website, and along with still photos um, to champion the narrative of your brand. Um, we really get clear on who you are as a service provider or a product founder or whatever it is that you're sharing with the world. We love to work with people who care deeply about the impact that they're having on their communities, who care about inclusivity, and who want to be themselves. And it's not about following trends. It's not about doing everything that they say you should, but rather doing what you know is right for your brand and the mission that you have. So if that sounds good to you and you're interested in the brand video package, you can schedule a discovery call at calendly.com slash ginger and carrot like the vegetable. And we'll meet you there. We are literally led by our calendars. So that is the best way to 
schedule a discovery call and we can talk more about what working together looks like. In my coaching practice, if you are looking for guidance on healing your relationship with money and getting to a place where money is something that you have this beautiful friendship with, um, then you can schedule a call with me at calendly.com slash Nisa creates, and we can talk about what that journey for you can look like with my one-on-one coaching. This is so cool, Nisa. I appreciate you sharing all that wealth of information. I have uh, the website link uh, for for Ginger and Carrot Production, your personal uh, LinkedIn profile, everything listed under the show notes, just in case if you are listening to this on replay. Uh, please reach out to Nisa and take advantage of some of these services. I think this sounds pretty cool. I, I know, you know, Nisa is 100% authentic. Otherwise, I would not have invited her on this show. So I can, I can, I can really vouch for her. So Nisa, if I'm not mistaken, I think you were introduced to me uh, by Nicole, right? Yes, Nicole introduced me to you. And I was like, oh, I love Nicole. She's awesome. <laughs> that is so cool that is a shout out to nicole uh i think she's going to be on my podcast after a few weeks also so thank you so much uh nicole for the introduction nisa has been a spectacular guest i just wanted to throw it out there i wanted to quickly brief people about the next week's episode i'm going to be doing a solo show by myself episode uh, 15 season 5 how to create multiple channels of consumption for your podcast Uh, And I'll try to dwell into the art of expanding your reach of your podcast through multiple channels of consumption. I'm going to share, you know, whatever I have figured out so far. So if you want to RSVP RSVP for that event, I have the link listed under this specific event. Or you should be able to find this under my LinkedIn profile under the event section. Nisa, is there anything else you want to leave my listeners with? Any advice, anything before we wrap up? The thing that I would love to leave you with is that everything we've discussed today, like being intuitive, being self-aware, is that just remember that this is a messy practice. This is not a cute endeavor. It's messy. It's not perfect. It is not about getting things right. It's really just about getting back to you and you are your home. That's all that it's about. So if you're feeling like all of a sudden your to-do list just tripled, (laughs) reduce the to-do list, reduce the pressure, and know that it's just about coming home to you. So that's what I want to leave you all with. That is so lovely. Nisa, I wanted to thank you once again for being a guest on the show. And all the listeners who are listening to us live or on replay, thank you so much for your love and support. Please continue to stay tuned every week, Wednesday at 3 p.m. I'm going to bring something interesting and special. Take care, guys. Bye.